Right, I said I'd show um, a schematic of this clock circuit. Uh, so here it is. Now really what I ought to do is completely remove the counter because the counter is not really relevant to this circuit at all. So if I take all these counter components out, we're just going to be left with the clock circuit. So uh, this is how it works. It's a standard uh, A-stable multi-vibrator configuration for a 555. Now, of course, you can't really see a lot without the 555 internals, so I'm going to add those in in a moment. But uh, the way this works, well, very simply, um, we've got this capacitor here. Let's imagine it's discharged, and we've got a resistor pulling up to VCC. So what's going to happen on this point here, on the threshold and the trigger pins, is that this voltage is going to rise gradually over time uh, from ground up to VCC. So this is a rising voltage at this point. Now with the 555 running in uh, full A-stable oscillator mode, what happens is when it gets to a certain point, um, the discharge pin is pulled to ground, uh, hard to ground through a transistor. So then of course the capacitor discharges again and constantly goes up and down and the output will flip between high and low and that's what gives us our clock. Now what I've done here is I've put my little slide switch, this little uh, slide switch here, I'm only using two of the connections on it, um, between this point at the top of my one microfarad capacitor um, through to my uh, single pole double throw switch which can either be pulled up to VCC through a 1K, this was a wire link originally which was a bit too uh, aggressive and we had all those glitches um, or if you press it the other way it pulls this point down through a 1k to ground so it stops the 555's oscillator circuit from free running and because the internal of the 555 has a set reset latch this combination of a single pole double throw switch and the set reset latch means we get a completely debounced output Right, now I've also got um, a potentiometer here. I've actually got a 203, so it's a 200K pot. And I've put a 1K resistor between pins 8 and 7 to try and uh, keep the uh, mark space ratio of the output uh, reasonably symmetrical over the full range of the pot. Got a feeling that may have caused one of the funnies on the signal we were looking at earlier, but I'll come back to that in a moment. That means we get uh, quite a wide range of frequencies that we can set on this potentiometer. Um, I'm in single step mode at the moment. I've ripped all the components out, so all I'm looking at now is the output, uh, which is this pin 3, pin 3 here, the output of the 555 on an LED uh, going high and low. If I switch this to free run mode, we can see that running. And now if I use a ceramic screwdriver on the pot, uh, I can adjust that so that it's slower. Uh, it does actually lock up if you take that too far, but I can have that running slowly, or I can have that running extremely fast, probably so fast you can't even see it. Yeah, that's strobing with the camera now. Um, so yes, we can vary the speed using that potentiometer. Right, so to make sense of how um, the free running oscillator works in the 555, I'm going to have to draw the internal components of the 555. Now uh, one of the familiar things is this uh, three resistors between VCC and ground and apparently these are 5k resistors. Some people think that's what gives uh, the 555 its name but apparently according to its designer it's a pure coincidence. Now the 555 also has two comparators. I'm gonna have to keep these reasonably small because I've run out of space a bit. It was a bit silly putting these labels in here, wasn't it? Because now I've not got much space. Okay, so the negative of the top comparator, that's minus, goes to there. Uh, the positive of the bottom comparator plus goes to that point. So uh, these two points on the comparators are at third VCC and two thirds VCC. Right, positive of the top comparator goes to, mm, well it goes to there, threshold, sorry it's a bit ugly, uh, negative of the bottom comparator goes to trigger, and these comparators go into a set reset latch, let's draw that, uh, now let me check, I think the top one is set, 
and the bottom one is reset. So those go into the outputs of those two comparators. So if we go back to looking at this voltage on this capacitor rising up because there is a current flowing down through this resistor, then what's going to, hap going to happen is at a certain point, this threshold will go more positive than two thirds VCC and the output will flip high and the latch will be set. Now, interestingly, uh, this is the Q output, Q there. It goes through an inverter to the output. So uh, when the latch is set, the output of the 555 actually goes low. Right, so now the clever bit. Um, this Q output has gone high because this voltage has written, risen above two thirds VCC. The latch has been set. How do we now force this capacitor to start discharging? Well, discharge is connected to ground, and that's done with a transistor like this. Uh, that is, oh, my pen's gone wrong. Yeah, so we have an NPN transistor here. There's going to be some sort of internal resistor there. So when this Q output goes high, it turns this transistor on, which pulls the collector down to ground. Now the collector is routed through to the discharge pin. So the output of the latch goes high, turns that transistor on, discharge is pulled to ground, and therefore the uh, capacitor is going to discharge through this ground path, and its voltage is going to head all the way back down again. Um, actually, I can carry on with this because when it goes below, when this trigger point goes below one third VCC, because that's where the positive of this comparator is connected, one third VCC on this resistor divider, then the output of this comparator will go high and it will reset the latch. Now, things we saw earlier, um, I'm not quite sure why this output was only swinging by four volts. I mean, it could be something as simple as one of these batteries is a bit flat. That's entirely possible because this output has, um, well, I don't quite know what the output of a 555 is, but it's going to pull fairly hard to ground and fairly hard to VCC. So we should have got the full five volt swing there. So the question now is um, when I removed the decoupling capacitors and also had uh, this switch pulling this point here, which is the trigger and the threshold inputs, the top of the capacitor, uh, that's actually the positive. I suppose I could mark that in positive, negative, because I'm using a tantalum uh, one microfarad. When these were wire links, why would switching this point uh, up and down between VCC and ground forcing this capacitor really to discharge very quickly and to charge very quickly. Why was that causing that weird sort of stepped output here at the output? I still don't really know. And uh, even with these 1K resistors and some decoupling between VCC and ground, why are we now getting the output here uh, rising up to a certain point and then having quite a slow rise. I did think that the point at which the fast rise turns into a slow rise is probably the point at which the threshold turns this comparator on and the latch is set. And that, of course, pulls pin seven to ground. So is it something to do with this 1K resistor that I've put across one end of my pot to try and symmetricalize the output? Is it something to do with that? Why though, though would that cause a problem actually at the output on pin three? Still don't really know the answer to that. If anyone's got any ideas, I'd be interested to hear them. Anyway, I'm happy with my uh, clock circuit. It's a super simple uh, standard A-stable multivibrator oscillator with the addition of this, a couple of switches and a couple of resistors, which makes it really easy to uh, set up and lay out and understand how it works. And uh, it does seem to work entirely reliably. I've had no um, contact bounce or double counts or multiple counts on my counter when the counter was on there. I've taken it off now. So I'm pretty much settled on this um, single step and free run oscillator. It's really very simple. Uh, so that's it really, uh, 1010 till we do it again.